Shaw took a change of direction on stage three between Manchester and Blackpool as the main field missed an arrow and went off course. For a moment, there was confusion. But when they got back on track, the Australian Jay Sweet produced a great sprint to get his first win of 1998. And in a photo finish, Stuart O'Grady snatched third, gaining a four seconds time bonus. He now led by 17 seconds ahead of his teammate Chris Boardman, with US Postal Riders Baron Oskin in Cappy next. Roman Wall City of Chester and the start of stage four on the Rudy, home of the famous Chester Cup horse race. The race rolled away along Fourgate Street before large crowds typical of the Pru Tour as the 93 survivors headed now toward the hills again. This time the destination is Nottingham, a ride of 154 kilometers crossing the Peak District climb of the Catam Fiddle. And welcome back to our coverage of the Prude Tour, the UK's premier cycle race. And there's an extra man in the peloton today, and he's in our team. A warm welcome to Simon O'Brien. Thanks, Phil, but I certainly won't be cycling nearly 100 miles to Nottingham over the Pennines today. I'm going to sit comfortably on the back of this motorbike and have a chat to a few people along the way. And there was a proud father there as well. He's obviously been watching the Prude Tour on Sky TV. Congratulations to Paul and Catherine. The race on the open highway, the weather conditions were cold, 15 degrees, overcast and a strong wind. But as soon as the race left Chester, they were on the climb of Kelsall Hill after only eight kilometers. And Jonathan Vaught, as the clear leader in the King of the Mountains in the blue here, was taking on Jens Voigt of the GAN team. Well, there was no challenge, Voigt has got the points. So Waters four points, Voigt got three, Julian Wynn was third and Chris Lillywhite over the top in fourth. 25 kilometres down the road, the British teams were on the attack. Kevin Dawson and Julian Wynn were now going clear. At 39 kilometres, a chase group was developing. Jakob Nielsen of Denmark and Matthew Possel, another Welshman, were trying to join them. The next climb on the horizon, the Cat and Fiddle, a very big climb over the Peak District, and the two leaders really were beginning to build up a massive margin. Kevin Dawson, the British 100-mile competition record holder and champion, knows all about riding long distances. He lies 41st overall, 18 minutes and 48 seconds off the leader's red jersey. And alongside him now was Julian Wynn, a similar distance behind. The gaps were opening. They were now more than six minutes ahead of the main pack. Well, the leaders between the two duos on the road was 1 minute and 54 seconds, the official gap. And this is what it looks like from the helicopter. And, Paul, there's an awful lot of empty road here. There certainly is. That time gap corresponds to a, around about one mile or one and a half kilometres. You can just see what that looks like from the air here because the two leaders are an awful long way up the road. You can just see the convoy of cars behind them and those are the two men in the lead and they've been at the front of this race since the 16th mile, 25 kilometres covered and they're going out for a very long attack. And they've built that gap up in something like 35 kilometres of racing. Take it from me, these boys are now hurting. I've climbed this climb up to the Cat and Fiddle on my touring bike. I wasn't going at this pace. Their muscles must be screaming now, and they haven't got an excuse to stop like I did. Lovely view. And these are the people who found the best view of the lot on the Cat and Fiddle. They're high up at the top of the Peak District Mountain, and they're looking down on the whole of the Pru Tour, making its way towards them. Jens Voigt in the sprint leader's jersey, who has been on the attack for the past two days, was now in the main field, and it's Tyler Hamilton who's gone clear, a US postal man. Certainly a good move by the Postal Service because they are the big rivals of the GAN team who really have closed this race down so far with the wins by Borman and Stuart O'Grady. Now they're looking to try and take the overall lead if they can and this is an ideal climb for them because it's a long climb, the Cat and Fiddle, around about five miles in length. Not a very steep gradient and you can see the speed that Tyler Hamilton is able to put in here. Well, he's continuing to ride on a terrifically big gear here on the lower slopes of the Cat and Fiddle. As he starts to move clear now, remember ahead, we have two groups of two riders up front. They are separated by the best part of two minutes, and Hamilton has accelerated well clear of the field. 
Looking back at the main field there, you can see all the white jerseys on the front. That was the whole of the GAN team trying to keep up a good pace. Meanwhile, further up the mountain field, the two leaders are making a good job and building up quite a massive lead as they go past the restaurant that used to be called the Dish and Spoon. And now it's the shining tour, I believe, Paul. Well, here at the front, Kevin Dawson. He's also the British best all-rounder, time trial champion, by the way. And his best 50-mile time is competition record of one hour and 37 minutes. An absolute perfect candidate to ride with Julian Wynn here on the climb. Now, back in the main field, that's uh, Matt Illingworth. Just behind Matt Illingworth. Looks a little concerned, Chris Borwin, but I think the race is running nicely for him because the men that matter are back in that main field. The orders have obviously gone out this morning from the Great Britain team and the Welsh team managers as well because they attacked almost immediately the gun went this morning and they were very aggressive. They were certainly looking for this kind of move. They wanted to put somebody out on the attack. Interesting, the fact is that the team manager for Wales, Shane Sutton, will be arriving this evening, so maybe the boys wanted to uh, show them that they were really in the race. I'll tell you what, they're doing very well, but this is an important move. This is Darius Baranowski, who's now gone clear of the pack, and in fact, he's in pursuit of his teammate, Tyler Hamilton, and very shortly around these bends, I think they'll see him. Now, this is interesting, Paul, that uh, Boardman and O'Grady do not seem to have countered the attack. It's a very clever move by Baranowski. He knows he's got his teammates up the road there. You can just see Tyler Hamilton going out of view. I can't understand why the GAN team allowed him to go clear unless they feel that they're strong enough to control all of these attacks and they want to keep the team together by chasing quickly on a climb. You could, in fact, blow the team apart, so maybe that's why they've just let them go clear at the moment. But it's a dangerous thing to do. An interesting move and a brave one too by Baranowski because overnight he is just 29 seconds off the red jersey of Stuart O'Grady. They are not going to allow him too much lead, I wouldn't think. Let's go back to the top of the cat and fiddle. The wonderful huge crowd here, many of them cycling enthusiasts cheering over Kevin Dawson. The Great Britain boy goes over first and the man from Abergavenny on the Welsh team, Julian Wynn, passes over in second. They are not competing against each other, Paul. I think they'll share the prizes here. Their ambition is to get to the finish. Certainly an important thing for them is to build up a good lead. Baranowski, further down the climb of the Cat and Fiddle, though, still hasn't caught up with his teammate Tyler Hamilton. And looking back at the main field, still all the white jerseys on the front there. That's the GAN team trying to control him. Well, the Cat and Fiddle, in fact, is a fairly steep climb, but it's very exposed, and you can see the riders for many kilometres in places. This is the third and fourth over the top, and Jakob Nielsen of Denmark uh, getting a first prize, I think, for the Danish young riders on this race. And just behind there, Matt Possel for Wales in fourth. There's the confirmed result as they go over the top of the Cat and Fiddle. They're making their way down towards Buxton now. Well, I don't know if you heard a little bit earlier, in fact, uh, Baranowski whistled here to Tyler Hamilton to wait for him. Hamilton has done just that. The two US postal professionals are now together, and that should ring warning bells in the main field right now certainly should you can see there's still no major reaction in the main field still the gan boys on the front the two u.s postal riders working together could pull themselves back into the race this could be very important the two leaders though the speed felt very high 57 kilometers an hour well you can see the road as it opens up this is the second chasing group now baronowski and hamilton remember we still have the dane and the welshman in between the two leaders so we've got three duos on the road at the moment and then we've got the main pack the main pack will be far more concerned about the whereabouts here of Baranowski. You saw him look over his shoulder there to see if he was getting away from them than they will be of the other four riders up ahead. Baranowski is a very much a serious contender to win this race. He's number 22. He's 30 seconds ahead of O'Grady. He is the leader on the road now, Paul, by a single second. Just one second, but that's all it can take in professional bike racing. Looking back there, it's still the white squad on the front, the GAN team trying to control it, but they should never have let two riders from the same team get clear. They should have tried to close it down almost immediately. And a big chance now for the US Postal Service to really put themselves back in the race. Well, Baranowski here goes over in fifth place. Hamilton will go over the top in sixth. As we go back up to the leaders now, they're racing away from the top of the cat and fill. You can see it way in the distance now. Kevin Dawson, Julian Wynn are onto something good here, I feel, today. These are the time gaps now. Three minutes, four seconds between the front four riders on the road, but significantly, Baranowski and Hamilton are 30 seconds ahead of the main field. They're the ones that are hunting down. We'll take a break.
welcome back to our coverage of the Pro Tour. These are the two men. The main field are still hunting, Baranowski and his teammate Tyler Hamilton. They are hanging on by just around about that 30 seconds, but they are pulling back of the first of the pairings ahead of them. And there is Jakob Nielsen and Matt Postle, Paul. Now, that'll be a good chance if they can just pull these two riders back. Then you have four men who will work together, although the two men they're about to, ca to catch now, Phil, have been away for an awful long time, I would think, are probably a spent force. Well, two first division professional riders coming up now on the elite amateur riders on the far right. They're moving across and joining the boys from the US Postal Service. Now four of them, what can they do? These are the two leaders. They still are holding on to a very comfortable lead and they're looking pretty cool. They certainly are. It's amazing their gap has stayed very constant over the last 20 or 30 kilometres. They've not lost anything at all, especially on the fast downhill descent into Buxton. But now you can see the main field, always led by the GAN team, starting to pick up the pace a little bit, thinking about the danger of a man like Darius Baranowski, who is a very talented bike rider. Well, the rest of the field know that the GAN riders must chase now with a man who's lying third overall and technically the race leader on the road. So they've got to hunt him. In fact, he's no longer the race leader on the road. That gap is now down to 17 seconds. So the boys from the GAN team are doing their job well. Team manager Johnny Welts up alongside Baranowski here, probably telling him what the situation is behind, letting him know that the GAN team are doing an awful lot of work here at the front. Baranowski finished the Tour de France last year in 87th position, but in future years, I certainly feel this man has a good crack at finishing in the top 20. Well, I would agree, because he's been around a long time, but he's only a very young man. Now, the bottom figure on that board, 4 minutes 57 seconds, I think it says. That's the gap between these two leaders and the riders behind. So it's still a healthy lead, Paul, although it was up to almost eight at one stage. The real reason it's come down quite dramatically is because of the pressure of the GAN team chasing Darius Baranowski, but Baranowski's got a flat tyre, so that will put an end to his hope there. You can see the main field coming round the corner, a very slow wheel change there from one of the neutral service cars, and Baranowski now is going to be in the main field. Well, Baranowski looks a little bit disgusted there. He's left standing on the roadside. He's seeing the pack go by. His lead, don't forget, was about 17 seconds when he got that flat, so he was going back towards this bunch. They'd be relieved to see him. They gave him a good look as they went by. You can actually see the relief on the faces of the GAN riders here. They're very happy to have pulled Baranowski. A few alarm bells, I would think, ringing there, but now they've got the race back under control. That, in fact, is a good move for the two leaders because now I think they'll slow down for a few more kilometres. Well, even the fact uh, the riders who are with Baranowski have also slowed down because here they are. Nielsen is going to be the first to be picked up by the GAM boys. And just ahead is Tyler Hamilton and Matthew Possel. So we have a complete field now with just the two British riders out in front and they still have a good lead. Now the GAN boys, Chris uh, Borman here talking to his teammates. I think he'd be content now to say they've reeled in the danger man. The momentum of the race going towards Nottingham is likely to pick up the two leaders. It certainly is. They're going to say now it's up to the teams of the sprinters who really would like to win if they want to come to the front and chase it down. Well, the riders are bound for the city of Nottingham, and there it is, the River Trent, uh, home of the famous rowing centre at Home Pier Pont, and the city making ready now to welcome the riders on the Tour. And the youngsters of Nottingham get their chance, as they do in every Finnish town, to have a little bike race of their own. Plenty of good, friendly competition, although it always is hard fought. And they can meet personalities such as Stephen Roach, the winner of the Tour de France, Russell Williams, a veteran world champion, and Hugh Porter, a former world champion. Also there today, TV personality John Leslie. And amongst the prizes are mountain bikes. They have a great time out. Welcome back. It's still Julian Wynn from Wales and Kevin Dawson from Great Britain with the gap before the rest of the pack. But can the big boys from GAN and the US Postal team rein them in in the sprint finish towards Nottingham? We'll find out. We certainly will, Simon, and these boys hope that they don't rein them in because, remember, they went away at around 24 kilometres today. They went away with all of the big climbs ahead of them, and as we come to the closing kilometres, this is Jay Sweet on the left of our picture, and Guillaume Auger is the other rider, both on the big mat team from France, and it looks as though Jay Sweet is in a little bit of pain there. The winner of yesterday's stage into Blackpool has gone down. His teammate there trying to encourage him, but it's because just a small amount of rain has just wet the road a little bit there. It's made it very slippy, and again, the advantage to the leaders, five kilometres remaining, and still three minutes, 14 to go. 
Well, whichever distance you think in, five kilometres or three miles, that is a good gap, Paul. Three minutes 14. They've got to concede now a minute a mile. That's a tough option for the bunch. Very difficult option for the bunch, but there is a tough climb coming into Nottingham where they could lose around about one and a half minutes. But these two riders still look pretty fresh, and I think the fact they've got that big lead will encourage them. Still attacks coming off the front of the main field. This is one of the big Matt Aubert riders. This is Stéphane Berger of France. Well, I presume they're aware that Jay Sweet and uh, Guillaume Auger are chasing behind. They're not going to get back into the field today, but they're not too worried about that, I wouldn't think. And the big map boys are going out looking, hopefully, to bring in the two leaders and snatch a stage win. Well, this is uh, Stéphane Berge. This French team has ridden very well in this race. They've got one win to their credit with Jay Sweet, who shot down uh, to finish outside the Blackpool Pleasure Beach yesterday and take the victory. These two riders are holding on big time. John Herity, a former professional bike rider, and now part of the setup that looks after the world performance team for Great Britain, cheering on what he hoped will be a home win today. Herity now knows, I think, these two riders are going to fight out the sprint, and a few words of advice to his man on the front riding for Great Britain, and he realises just exactly what he has to do in the sprint. Herity himself was a very good sprinter, so he'll have some good tips to give. Yatislav Yekimov of US Postal Service is there, right on the front. Uh, Stuart O'Grady in the Red Leaders jersey is being very vigilant now. The speed is up and the gap is tumbling at quite an alarming race. And I'm not surprised because these riders are getting very twitchy indeed now. Three kilometres to go. The gap is beginning to fall very, very quickly indeed. It is going to be touch and go. It certainly is. The main field now will be pushing speeds of around about 60, 65 kilometres an hour. The gap has come down, 2 minutes, 15 seconds. So I would say, Phil, these two men are not going to get caught. But which one's going to win? Which one indeed, because we've seen them on the road share the food and they have obviously shared the prizes today. They haven't wasted energy trying to beat one another. But, of course, they both want the £1,000 for the stage victory. Well, we'll have to find out very shortly because, first of all, they've got to survive. These moments of hesitation by the big field as they reshuffle are crucial now to the success of this escape. Now, this is the climb I was telling you about, two kilometres remaining to the finish. Just over the top, it plunges right down into the city centre of Nottingham. We've just been past the factory where rally bicycles have been made for many, many years. Second position there, Julian Wynn, looking quite comfortable, taking a back seat, letting his own partner for the whole day this afternoon, Kevin Dawson, set the pace at the front. Well, Nottingham has been the home of the bicycle industry as well, of course. And now the bike riders are coming in towards the finish. The Big Matt Aubervilliers team are right on the front in those reddish-coloured jerseys. But now we've got Jens Voigt, and he has been such a bonus to the team of Gann. He is so strong bringing them up. Now it looks as though Julian Wynn is trying to ride away from Kevin Dawson. They're down to a minute and eight seconds. It is going to be close. Very quick, the way that gap came down. One time over five and a half minutes now, just one minute and eight seconds remaining. Julian Wynn tried to get away there, but you see Kevin Dawson very alert. He's obviously warned about that by John Herity, and he came straight back to him. Two men still in the lead. And Jens Voigt still leading the charge from the race as two of the uh, big map boys are trying to go clear. This is the man who finished third a couple of days ago. Uh, Ludovic Auger is on the front here. And he's trying to jump at the very last of knockings here and get at least a third-place finish again. This is a great launch pad to the victory if you can just get away. It's a very difficult climb at the front. The two leaders have one kilometre remaining. Now Julian Wynn starting to look a little bit worried over his shoulder all of the time. He can sense the fact that Kevin Dawson is there. Dawson, not a great sprinter, but after such a long breakaway, it could go either way. And if they succeed, and it looks as though they will, they will have led this race for the 130 kilometres today. Now this is the turn into the home straight. A massive crowd again in Nottingham by the University here. And look at this now, because Kevin Dawson is going to come from behind and go for the line. But Julian Wynn isn't done for yet, because Julian Wynn of Wales is digging very deep into his reserves here. This is going to be a big victory for this young man, and he takes it on the line. And Kevin Dawson right with him in second place. Well, two years ago, Wynn was a top 
a cross-country cyclist. Now it looks like he's going to be a top rope, and here's the bunch being led out for Big Magnus Baxter of Gan. The man he wants to win is in the red jersey for the bonus, and O'Grady now is coming as Baxter moves over to let him through, and Stuart O'Grady gets another bonus. He takes third place again. Well, that man is riding so, so well this event. It's a happy day for Great Britain and Wales. All began 24 kilometres out from Chester. They faced a ride alone of 130 more. And at the finish, a Julian win of Wales. Got a big stage win for the country. And for him, I would think, a certain place in the Commonwealth Games. In the sprint for the third place, the red jersey of Stuart O'Grady cleaned up the seconds again. This man is nosing further ahead. Well, first the stage result, a win for win. Dawson second, O'Grady third, Andre Korf there again in fourth. Further down, Sean Yates safely home, 44th this time out. Well, Julian, that was a long way to ride at the front of the race to uh, get a great victory. Yeah, it was. It was a, it was a very long way, you know. Uh, I doubted it a couple of times, but when Kevin came up to me, you know, it was an ideal combination, really. And... Uh, he was just, you know, really strong, and I owe a lot to Kevin as well, you know. And anything to do with the fact that uh, Shane Sutton's coming on the race in a couple of days' time? Yeah, well, if I didn't win, he probably beat me up, so, you know, I had no choice, really. Did you think, though, once you were got out there on that early breakaway that you could stay away because you've ridden these kind of races before, and when the big guns start to roll at the end, it's hard to hold them off? Well, I knew it was a matter of getting three or four minutes, and once a motorbike came along and said that, I started to think, you know, got a good chance here, and uh, just put my head down and just hope for the best, really. Pretty chuffed to get a win like that. Absolutely brilliant. Made that, mate. Well then. Cheers, thanks a lot. Made it, you should be doing. That was a great victory. And now the spoils of that victory, and it really is worth it, isn't it? So Julian Wynn got the stage. But overall, no real change, but of course O'Grady now has moved out to 21 seconds ahead of the rest. Chris Borman holds second and none of these riders change in their positions as they were at the start of the day. Chris Newton still in there in sixth place for Team Bright Voice. Champagne being sprayed by the overall leaders of this tour. Their coloured jerseys now fresh and renewed at the end in Nottingham. O'Grady is the race leader. O'Grady is also the points leader. Jens Voigt is the sprint leader. Waters is the king of the mountains. A well-taken win indeed. I'm sorry for the pun, but Julian really does have the right name. The British riders today started out with great determination and they got the result they wanted. Now it's on stage number five. The riders going away from Birmingham, 207 kilometres across the Welsh mountains. The race will finish in Cardiff. Stay with us here on Sky Sports and enjoy this event. Goodbye. Did you enjoy that?